Yeah, we didn't. So that's right. Yeah, so we have to do that. So uh, remember, we um, we didn't prove this, right? If we have two irreducible characters, then the inner product is, is, is uh, okay. So so let's so let's prove that. Um, some let's rem let's remember some things. So I think we've already used it. Um, so a character we define the inner product like this, right? The sum of the, co the conjugacy class, or or uh, well, maybe this this definition here, okay. Now, and that maybe last time this was a bit confusing. So, so you can rewrite you can rewrite the character uh, in in this form that we saw today in the exercises, and the proof of that is is the following because, um, so we know that in the proof of Maxwell's theorem there is we there is a we, uh, we have this G invariant inner product that we built within the proof, so we can find an ortho an orthonormal basis with respect to to this uh, to this inner product. Okay, so that makes um, the the matrix representation with that basis to be a unitary matrix. So unitary means that it's inverse. It's the is the it's it's, a, it's the trans the, the complex the, the, ad, the adjoint or the, the you take the transpose and then conjugate the matrix. Okay, but then in in a unitary matrix, so so the the, the columns of this matrix would be orthonormal. That's what makes it unitary. Okay, but that's equivalent to saying that the well. An equivalent definition of a unitary matrix is the proper, this property, that its columns are orthonormal, but also its rows are orthonormal. Okay? So since the rows are orthonormal, uh, this, we, we have this other property. That, that if we look at the, this, this, the, the conjugate of this trace, okay, that's the same as, uh, by the trace of a matrix is the same as the trace of its transpose. And here we get, um, we, we get trace of the of the, of the inverse, okay. Uh, so so we get the trace of the inverse, okay. So so that's why it, th th that's why that that was true, okay. So we can rewrite the inner product of characters in this form, where we have chi of g and psi of g, inverse. okay. So um, this motivates something that's going to be useful for the proof that we're going to if you have two class functions from the group to the complex numbers, we're going to define a bilinear form. I should. I was using double prime last time, so it doesn't get confused to this one. But so don't get. So okay, I'm gonna. Well, anyways, maybe I'll use two prime. But so I just define it like this. Okay, F G H G inverse. So I don't know it's an inner product because these are not necessarily class functions. But okay, but I'm gonna define it like that. Okay. Okay. So so. Okay. Okay. So then. So this is all we need. So let me just. Uh, let me just take. Take this here. Uh, so let's start with this. Okay. 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 So now uh, let's work with with this proof. Okay. Um, okay. Right. So maybe good. So um, so let's. Uh, let A and B be uh, matrix representations of um, of, of the of these irreducible representations. Okay. Okay. I, if you don't understand the handwriting, please stop me. Okay. Uh, and these are of sizes d and d prime, so degrees d, d and d prime. Okay, so then what do we have? We have that the character, the first character, is going to be the trace of this matrix. So it'll be a one of g plus a d d of g. Okay, and the second character would be b one g plus b d prime d prime d prime. Okay, I mean a is a representation, so we have we associate a matrix to each element of the group a g. And, and basically, each entry of the matrix is its own function from the group to the complex. Okay, and this gives you the trace. So is the setup okay? Okay. Um, so, so, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to build a matrix T that kind of. Um, Commutes with the representation, so that it's, it's a matrix you would see in Schur's lemma. Okay. 
so can you remind me what was Schur's lemma? What, what was Schur's lemma? So Schur's lemma says that if we have a homomorphism between irreducible representations, then what can we say about the homomorphism? There's two possibilities. Yeah, either it's a zero or it's an isomorphism. Okay? So here we have two irreducible representations. I'm going to build a map. I'm going to build a, a homomorphism between them, and, and, and that's going to impose a lot of restrictions on that homomorphism. Okay? For example, it's going to be zero if the matrices are not isomorphic, if the representations are not isomorphic. Okay? So that's, so that's where I am. Okay. So, um, okay, so, so imagine I have, uh, I'm going to have some indeterminates. We'll see why we need these in a second. Okay, so, 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 um, so here's the matrix. I'm going to define it, well, it should be something like this, okay? And I'm going to see what X has to be so that, so that I have a homomorphism, okay? So, um, okay. So I claim that I claim that this that uh, this matrix T, this matrix representation T, uh, or sorry, that this. So this is going to be. So T is here is going to be. If, if you look, if you, it's going to be a D. Um, ah, sorry. Uh, let me go back. So this matrix X is D times D prime, okay? You know, so that this makes sense. So um, I claim that um, that basically T is a homomorphism of representation. This is, what, this is what it means to be a homomorphism of representation, okay? Okay? Okay, so let's see why that's true. Okay, so um, okay, so let's see. Well, um, I'm going to I'm going to show that this is equal to t, okay, which is the same. Okay, so I have one over the group size of the group. I sum over everything in the group. I have a h. I have uh, Excuse me? Oh, where? Oh, so, so, uh, so sorry, I'm going to put this in. So T has this sum over G. So I'm going to put, I'm going to kind of put AH. Um, yeah, you're right. So, so yes. Uh, but, I, and I have, but, uh, so I have, I, yeah. So I have, okay, so I just kind of put it inside the sum. Okay? Okay, now this is a matrix representation. So what can we say about this part here? What is that equal to? Yep. Okay. So what can we say about this this part here? Right. I should look at this. So yeah, yeah, that's exact. This is A, so this is G, sorry. And this is A H of G. Here I have my matrix of indeterminates. And here I have B of G inverse, H inverse, right? Because V H inverse is V of H inverse. Okay. Okay, and then you see so so, but if you sum over the group and you're summing over H times G, that's the same as summing over the group. So this is the same as, like kind of the same. You should we pull this trick over when you average by the group. Uh, you get this kind of invariance. Okay, so this is the same as T. Okay, because it, excuse me. Yeah, absolutely. OK, 
Okay, so so this matrix is um, it's a homomorphism of of the representations. Yes. Because it because it's a matrix because it's a matrix homomorphism. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Exactly. So uh, any questions with this? Why we why the claim is true? Okay. So the claim is true. Okay. 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 So then, by Schur's lemma, well, for us it was one of the corollaries. Of Schur's lemma, uh, what do we have? Well, T is going to be either this, the zero matrix if A is not isomorphic to B or it's the identity or it's a scalar multiple of the identity if they're isomorphic. Okay? Yeah? Because again their A and B are irreducible. Okay? So basically, we just have to check that in both of these, in either of these cases, the corresponding inner product is of the characters is going to be one, or is going to be zero or one. In this case. Okay. Okay. So let's look at. So essentially, this will happen if the characters, so are not equal. And this will happen if they're e if they're equal. Okay. So let's look at let's look at. Uh, both both cases. Okay, like what happens with the inner product? Okay, case one. Uh, let's assume that the characters are not equal as functions. Okay. Okay, so yeah. So T equals the zero matrix. Okay. Um, so. Well, so that's basically every entry here is zero. Every entry here is zero. So let's see what that implies. Okay. So um, okay. So so for so so we have that T i j is zero. So that means that um, what is zero? If I sum over k and l in the elements of the group. I have a i k of g x k l b l j of g inverse is zero. Okay, so I just extracted the i j entry of. So what I did is I extracted the i j entry here. Okay. So, so, so here I have a product of three matrices, so I need to sum over K and L. Okay. Yeah. So is, is that okay, or should I? Like you're basically, yeah. I mean, you're taking the matrix. Yeah. So 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 so, so here, uh, let me. What do I have here? So I'm looking at if I want to get the i jth entry. So if I have, if this is A, I have X, and I have B. If I want to get the ijf entry, I need to take this. I, I need to add, basically, the, the, to take the inner product of the i row um, with, uh, so, sorry, yes. So, so with, uh, sorry, I, so this would be um, i, and then this would be j, okay? And then you would have to take uh, basically, you have to, as you sum over this, you would have to, uh, you, you would have to multiply it with this. Is that correct? Or no? Uh, oh, one second. Yeah. That, okay. That, yeah. Sorry. That would give you the. That would give you this. So this would give you the. You would get a x i k, and you would have to multiply by b. K, J, or I think in my notation it would be L. Sorry, this would be I L, and this would be L J. Okay, and that would give me the I J entry. 
Yes. Yes. So, well, so so basically, uh, so yeah, T is so this T is is a, is an example of a of a homomorphism, okay? But then Schur's lemma imposes a lot of restrictions on T because A and B are irreducible. So okay, so what's our goal? No, so our goal, so our, our goal, yeah, good point, thank you. So our goal is to show that the inner product, if these are not the same, this should be zero. In this case, we ha we, our goal is to show this. Okay. We have not we have not finished the proof of zero. No. Our goal is to show that the, if they're isomorphic, if they're not isomorphic, the inner product is zero. If they're isomorphic, the product is one. So so we we were halfway there. We build the we build this matrix, and this matrix has to be either zero or a, con a, a multiple of the identity. And from each of these two cases, we're going to conclude that either this is 0 or 1. Yes. Other questions? Yeah, sorry. So we have a, OK. But how do you go from, like, how do you go from, from Schur's lemma to the character? I mean, look at t. Like, it's not quite, like, the trace, you see, we, we need to show that the inner product of these two things is, so eventually we're going to go back to this. But, okay, but we're not, we're almost there, not, not, not quite there, okay? Okay. Um, so, so these are, so the x, the x, kl are indeterminate, okay? So you should view this equation as a polynomial. So as a polynomial in the axis, okay, um, the coefficients are zero. Uh, so sorry. Right? Yeah. So if I fix. If I fix k and l, um, I have that the coefficient. What's the coefficient? It's going to be one over g, summing over the group a i k g b l j g inverse is zero. Okay, because view this as a linear polynomial in the x k l. Where? Here? No, so, so, so I guess here I fixed ij, and now I'm going to fix kl also. Okay? Okay? So, 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 um, so now it's when, so, so this is a point where this, in this inner, this bilinear form I defined at the beginning is helpful, just convenient. I can write this as i k. B L J prime equals zero. Where uh, I'll go, I'll, I'll flash this back. Sorry. Remember, I'm gonna if I have two functions from the group to the complex numbers, this sum I'm gonna write it like this. Okay. Okay. So from this definition here, definition four, I can rewrite this thing I just found in this more compact form. Okay. So I have that this is zero for any i, j, k, l, okay? So it's a big restriction. So let's look at my, let's look at our trace. Now we can finally, now we can conclude. So what's the, what is this character? Oh, by proposition one from last time, this is the same as so, you know, when you sum over, like the sum is summing over G and you have Psi of G inverse. No, sorry, Psi of G complex conjugate. That's the same as summing over Psi G inverse, which is this thing, this bilinear form, yeah? 
Okay, and what's this? So, so, so is the first equality okay? Here? Can Proposition one from lecture six. Okay. Okay, and what is this? This is lecture seven. So. Okay, so now we can. I mean, let me once. So, what is psi? It's a one one g plus. Ah no. no. What's psi is a11 plus dot 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 a d d, and psi is b11 plus dot 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 b d prime d prime. Yeah. So this is the sum over i and j of a i i b j j prime. Yes. And what's each of these? Each of these is zero. That was my conclusion here. So if I call this double like two stars, this is zero. Okay? So I show that the characters are zero. Okay? How is that okay? So that's case one. So the fact that this matrix T is zero forces the character to be zero. The inner, the, the, the inner product of the characters to be zero. Yes. Yeah. Because this is true for all. So this here was true for all. For all i, j, k, l. Just by, sorry, I, this means by this relation here. Yeah. Oh, I, I call this conclusion here double star. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I guess my handwriting is pretty bad. If <laughs> stars are, could be potentially words. Okay. 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 Good. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, So okay, so that's case that's case uh, that's case one. So case two is when they're when they're equal. Okay, when they, what happens if the characters are equal? Okay, so let's finish this one. Okay, uh, you know what? Let me just move this down so it's better. So I have some. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going over the place. Good. Okay, and you have this is all is. In the in the notes. Oh, Andrew, do you want? Do you need to copy for me? Okay. Case two, the characters are equal. So in this case, T is a scalar multiple of the identity. Oh, yeah, and of course, D n is equal to D prime. Okay, because they're isomorphic. Okay. So, um, so okay. So what so what does that tell us? So it says that, um, well, excuse me? Oh, because, okay, let me, let me, uh, yeah. This is because if this is true, then A is isomorphic to B. And therefore, if, if, we, if, if we have an isomorphism, T has to be a scalar multiple of the identity by Schur's lemma. Okay? So, um, so, so then, what do we conclude? Then, then, I by the same kind of process, B L J. This bilinear form is going to be zero if I is different from J, because I have an off I have an off diagonal element, so my T is C C C. So if if I'm off, if I'm off the diagonal, I ha I'm a zero. Okay. Okay. This is just uh, T I J. Okay. By the same process we did before. Okay. And now what happens for um, I equals J? So now uh, if I equals J, then um, 
I have, well, let's see. So I know that T equals this. Okay. And that's G. Okay. So uh, let's take the trace. Both sides. So here I'm going to have C times D. Here I'm going to have 1 times G. And I'm going to have the trace of this whole thing. OK. OK. Uh, but, uh, oh, geez. Yeah, but of course, A is equal to B, right? So this, uh, I can replace this by A of G inverse, OK? Which itself is equal to A G inverse, yeah? And trace of A, B, A, X, A inverse is the same as trace of X. So this is 1 over G. I'm, I'm, I'm from here. Uh, okay, yeah, I should maybe, you're right. So here I should uh, just assume they're equal. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're isomorphic. I might as well, I have a freedom to choose these matrices A and B. They're just representations. I choose them to be representations, so take them to be equal. Yeah, you're right. So um, take it to be isomorphic, and maybe, um, yeah, I should say that, yeah, I should say that here. Good, good point. So I should say that, um, so take A to be equal to B, okay? Okay, so here we have the sum, and here we have trace of X, okay? Um, so, the, so what do I conclude from here? So, so what do we conclude from this, from here? Um, so... Uh, and and what happens when you so here you see so so what, what am I doing here? I have one over the group, I'm summing over everything in the group, and I'm multiplying it by, and I'm just summing the trace. Okay, but this this is not there's no dependence on g here, so I can take this out, and I'm just summing the trace this many times. So this is just the trace of x. So the trace of x is c times d. Okay. So, um, so basically, uh, the ii entry, which is just c, is just one over d times the trace of x. Okay. Okay. So, so um, yes. Yeah, so, so, so. so Let me just keep some of this here. Okay, so so we're almost done. Um, okay, so yeah, right. So, so so basically, what so so what do I have? Um, I have that T I I is also it's also this inner product. This by linear form, sorry. Okay, and so that's what. So, so basically, my conclusion is that if i equals j, so if if i is distinct from j, this is zero, and if i equals j, this is going to be um, one over d, the trace of x. Okay. So I, mean, I should say so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, and the trace of x is just 1 over d, x11 one one plus x dd. Okay? Uh, well, i equals j, I guess, I guess. So this should be j, but it's the, I, I'm in the case i equals j. Okay? Okay, so um, do I have this? 
Oh, oh, oh. Uh, no, no, actually. Uh, sorry, sorry. I, I, I thought I said so. My this is a this here is so this is not quite right. Yet, so. TII is one over G summation over the group A I K G X K L B well um, yeah B L J but. It's the same as P. Sorry. Okay, sorry. So I have this. Um, okay, so, so, so here, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that here I have another polynomial identity. Okay? In the x's, in my indeterminates. Okay? Okay? I think I might have lost you, but. Um, so remember, the, the, the look at the formula for, for, the, for T. It's here. So if I want to if I want to extract a diagonal entry, that's a, that's what I'm doing. So I have a i l g x i x l k b k i, okay, and a equals b, okay. So that's what I did here, okay. So again, here you have an equality of, polyno of polynomials in the x's. So what can you say about like so? So if you equate coefficients, what do you have? So equate coefficients of x, k, l, and what do you get? Well, what's the coefficient on this side of x? Um, well, the coefficient of x, k, l is going to be 1 over d. And it's only going to be 1 if k equals l. You only have, like, a trace here. Yeah? So. And, and so, and what's the coefficient of x k l? It's just the bilinear form of a i. Well, the thing I have here. Whoop. So if you equate coefficients, you get this. Yeah. Okay. So we're done. So the character. So the inner product of the characters is, again, the same as the bilinear form of the characters. And by the same argument of, as we had before, this is the, the sum of the bilinear forms of the corresponding diagonal um, entry. OK? Tension is so high, you cannot hear a needle going. And this is only going to be, yes. Yeah, what? Mm -hmm. um, so, so. I see what you mean. So basically, in this case, we have that the characters are equal. Okay. Um, so if the characters are equal, um, right? So so oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. So so if so so uh, yeah. So I, I have the answer to your question. So so let's if we look at proposition one from characters, okay. We have that. Um, uh, let's see. No, but we cannot assume this because I'm using that. Okay, so, uh, like, like somehow we're using this for, this in some form, right? That if that if characters are equal, then you write more. So, 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 so let me let me. I see more things, but 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 let me but let's see. So, so let's yes. Yeah, so, so, so maybe let's let, so let's retrace the proof. Thank you. So, so our goal is to show this. Okay. Okay. So we start with two representations. We start with we have two representations, uh, matrix representations A and B. And uh, we build a, a homomorphism between them. This is T. Okay. So because 
A and B are irreducible, T is either either zero, either the zero matrix or or a, or, a, or, a, or a multiple of the identity. If you're a multiple of the identity, it means you're an isomorphism, so that means A is isomorphic to B. So we, but by Schur's lemma, we're stuck in these two cases. Okay, so in the first case, if if um, so, so in the first case we we're in so we're, we, uh, we so, so yeah so so if we're in the so uh, here we're in the first case. Okay. So I should say, um, oh, this is case two. We already did case one. So, so case one was the case where uh, A was not isomorphic to B, and we concluded that the character was zero. And now we're in the second case where they're isomorphic. So because by Schur's lemma, that's the other alternative. So uh, I should say maybe, um, yeah, so I should say, I, I should have said this. So I, sh I should put first, we're in the second case, yes? Okay? In that case, if, there are, if A and B are isomorphic, I know the characters are equal. Because we showed, some, we showed, we showed before that if we have isomorphic representations, the characters are equal. Okay? Does that, the, the converse is true, but the converse uses the orthogonality of characters, which we, we were proving right now. But the easy direction is to show that if you're isomorphic, the you have equal characters. Okay? Yeah, so this order was backwards. Okay? Um, so, uh, but now, uh, because we have, a f we know, is, so we, we, could, we could simplify our lives and take A to be equal to B. Because we know they're isomorphic, so just take the same matrix. In this situation, we can do we can do. Okay, so 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 further so because we have a. Um, yeah. So so here further we could take uh, a to be equal to b. Is 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 that is that okay or or if e Yeah, but, but the thing is, we, we, we have a, the thing is A and B, we chose A and B just to be matrix representations. So, so we, 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 we chose them. So they're not, they're not given to us. Yeah, so, okay. 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 Okay, so, so finally, I'm here. So we concluded that, that these, these, this, this bilinear form is 1 over D if they're equal, if can, if, ah, Yes, you can L are equal, otherwise they're zero. Okay, so I'm in this situation, so everything is one over, so um, this is going to be uh, one over, so the only ones that survive are if i is equal to j, yeah? And I'm gonna get one over d, okay? And then I'm summing d things, so this is d over d, so this is one. How is that? Okay, that was kind of brutal. Um, so let's have some fun the rest of the class, maybe, or something less. Okay. Okay. So we proved theorem one. We proved orthogonality of characters of the first kind. Okay. Let's get rid of this. Okay. Okay. So going back to something Christian was was asking so he, he said oh uh, well wh what happens to the to the regular representation we've done the defining representation what about the regular representation okay so let's analyze so new thing let's analyze um, the decomposition of the of the regular representation of a group okay so this is the regular representation and uh, we have a name for this too this is the group algebra okay so uh, again by Mashke's theorem we have that V decomposes as some direct sum of irreducible but here I'm going to I'm going to put the, I'm going to allow to have them all. So these are uh, all the inequivalent irreducible 
representations of G. Okay? So my question is, the same thing we did for the regular, for the defining, what are the MIs? Okay? Make sense? Okay. So, but now, uh, what's, the, what's, the, what's the dimension of, what's the dimension of V? Excuse me? The size of G, yeah? So how do we answer this question? Um, well, maybe let's let's maybe remember some things before. Uh, so I'm gonna, yeah. So we 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 already did a little bit of this. So what's the? So say that V has character. Bigger than or equal. I'm just I'm just listing them all. So so. And let's call chi be the character of, of this. Okay? I think we've computed the character of G. This is the trace of XG. Yeah? And what's XG? It's some permutation matrix of size G, size of G times size of G. And what do we find about so when you have a permutation matrix, the trace is the number of fixed points? And what did we find? This is zero if G is different from the identity. And what is it equal to if you're the identity? The size of the group. Okay. So the characters of the of the regular representation are either zero or the size of G. So they're kind of easy. Okay? So that should help us with my MIs. Because what's MI? How do I get this multiplicity? I take the inner product of chi with the irreducible. Okay? And what is this? This is 1 over the size of the group, summation, everything in the group, character of G, character of G inverse of the irreducible one. Okay? Yeah, good. Yeah, so yeah, so because so this is a permutation matrix because the we write because G uh, takes H to GH, and if you have a fixed point, G is forced to be the identity because when you when G acts on the group, it just permutes the group, but. But you know, if, if if you have a fixed point, so if you have a fixed point, it would be that G for some H, G H equals H, so G would have to be the identity. Okay? So if, if G is not the identity, your permutation matrix, your size of G times size of G matrix is gonna is gonna have no fixed points. But because we're not in this world, we're in the we we, we are in the regular representation. So, so basically, when when you take G and you multiply and you just let G multiply everything in your group, it's we're doing the regular. Yes. What yeah. the action of G? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so so then this. So then if we're uh, we're back to computing this multiplicity. So what is this going to be? It's all. Yeah. So we're just going to get. Um, this. Okay, maybe I should just do. Yeah, that's fine. yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is the size of G, so we get. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, are we are we there? Okay, are we here? Okay, and what's this value? It's the dimension of the irreducible representation, vi. Okay? So something very interesting is happening. 
the number of times we see the ith irreducible representation, it's the, the dimension of that irreducible representation. So they all appear. Okay? So let me get this out. So, okay, example. So now, uh, so Christian, the, the question you asked at the beginning of class. <laughs> if you take the regular representation in S3, how does it decompose into the three irreducibles? M1 is going to be the dimension. The sign is dimension 1. And this one has sign 2. Okay? So, yeah? Okay? Okay, good. So, um, okay. So let's summarize kind of these findings in a result, in a proposition. Uh, I'll, I'm going to owe you something, but proposition one. So let V be the group algebra that breaks as, in, as this, okay? Thank you. Thank you. So we have one copy of the identity, one copy of the sign, and two copies of the of the of the two-dimensional. Okay. Okay. So if you break like this, what are the findings we have? Um, M i is the dimension of V i. Okay. Two. Well, this thing has dimension size of g. So if kind of if, if this is the, the, the dimension, what is g going to be? It's going to be the sum over i of the dimension of vi squared. Right. Okay? Make sense? So kind of two follows from one. Okay? Three. But it's three. Yeah. The number of irreducibles is the number of conjugacy classes that we have not shown. Okay. Yeah. Sorry? So, so, so Arthur is saying that, um, yeah, so I mean, we have not definitely not shown three, but so Arthur says that uh, we have that the irreducibles, um, well, you're saying it's less than or equal the, why is that? Uh-huh. Yeah. So yeah, so 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 we so the irreducible characters are class functions, and we just shown in theorem one with a lot of pain that they were orthogonal. Okay, so that means that they are uh, linearly independent. Okay, and we we've seen that the the space of class functions has dimension the number of conjugacy classes. So that's why this. Uh, so we know that this is the less than or equal the number of conjugacy classes. Okay, but we don't know the other the other equality. Okay, so 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 okay, so we, we have this at the moment. So uh, by theorem one, the characters are the characters which are class functions are orthonormal, orthonormal, so they're linearly independent. Okay, and this is combined with the fact that. Um, the dimension of Rg equals the number of conjugacy classes. Okay? But we need to show the other color. Okay? Okay, so, so I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Um, I'll, I'll do that. So I'll show this. The, I'll show the missing part next time. So um, next time. Okay? But let me, let me make a pause here. 
So yeah, th we'll have to do a bit more work <laughs> to get the other the other type. Um, so we're going to have to study the center of the group algebra of the symmetric group, or, or the, the group algebra of any group. But let me stop here and and tell me why tell me why here I kind of like there's a there's a gem hidden. Okay, so yeah, so this is saying that the size of the group is the sum of the dimension of the irreducible square. So I I do kind of enumerative and algebraic cometric. So if you see such a statement, this is saying that, well, well, that this is, uh, I mean, let's see what it means for the symmetric group. So it's saying that n factorial is the sum over all the irreducibles, but the irreducibles by three is the number of conjugacy classes. And in the symmetric group, conjugacy classes are indexed by cycle type, so i.e. partitions, OK? of n, and you get this dimension of the irreducible squared. So, so for example, in S3, we have 6, and then we have 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared from here. 